Okay, I've got a uh, piece of uh, lab created emerald here. And this is the uh, this is from Chatham, and there's basically two kinds of lab created. Uh, this is the Zambian, uh, what's called the Zambian uh, lab. Uh, the other one's called Colombian. The Zambian's darker than the Colombian. They're both beautiful and cut beautiful stones. The Chatham material is. Uh, Almost, uh, almost flawless. There is an inclusion uh, right here where my thumb is. Maybe I can show you that uh, with some magnification. But I have a special order for a, a Portuguese cut uh, 11 millimeter, and this piece will work out very nicely. Okay, I put the uh, our emerald into refractol. Uh, refractol is a liquid that has the same refractive index as quartz, not the same as emerald or barrel, but close enough so that you can see into the stone. And we can pretty well see the stone's clean except uh, right here in it, this last couple of millimeters at the end, there's a veil. There's an inclusion inside. I don't think it'll give me any problems as long as I put this in the pavilion, the bottom half of the stone, because I'll be cutting uh, our Portuguese to a center point. So I think all this will be cut off. I don't think there'll be a problem. There's no other inclusions in the stone. Our refractile does a nice job of uh, letting you look into the stone. You can see it, now it's on the other side over here. A little bit, little bit of veil. Other than that, the stone's uh, flawless. And like I said, I think I'll cut through that. So I think we're okay with using this stone for our special order. Fortunately, the design that the client wants the gemstone in is the Portuguese cut, which is one of my favorite designs to cut. Um, I'll use the design by the late Jeff Graham called Simple Portuguese, but since I'm learning Gem Cut Studio or GCS, I want to load this design by Jeff Graham into GCS and see if the angles for cutting can be tweaked a little bit for barrel or emerald to see if I can further improve the brilliance of the gemstone using GCS. I created a tutorial video series on learning all about GCS, so those folks who want to travel along with me in my journey to learn about GCS can do so. In the GCS tutorial number three, I explain about symmetry and I demonstrate how to recreate an existing design into GCS for designs that use symmetry. In that video, I show step-by-step -step how to recreate a round gemstone design, and that's exactly the same process uh, used to load Jeff Graham's Portuguese design into uh, my GCS library. So here's a link to that uh, tutorial on symmetry. And I won't take the time here to show you how I loaded Jeff's simple Portuguese into my GCS uh, library. And it's my belief that you will have no problem recreating Jeff's design and saving it into your own library of gem faceting diagrams in your own version of Gem Cut Studios or GCS if you follow that video. As far as getting the simple Portuguese design uh, in a PDF version, in a previous video, I showed you how you can basically go back in time on the internet and access Jeff's now closed website and download all of the about two dozen or so free gem cutting diagrams which Jeff put into the public domain for all gem cutters to use. Here's the link to that video if you're interested. The next step is to change the material being cut in the design to barrel or emerald by going to render and from the material drop down screen selecting emerald barrel. Then go to tilt performance and uh, select the graph to show brightness, head shadow and window. In very basic terms, what I'm looking to do is get the most brightness from looking directly down at the finished stone. So this is at the uh, zero degree tilt angle. I also want to minimize windowing. Head shadow isn't as important as brightness or windowing, so don't worry too much about that for now. Uh, windowing, that's, again, that's where light passes directly through the gemstone. 
but the angles are cut wrong so the, the light doesn't reflect back and it's not good. So want to minimize windowing. So according to GCS, if I cut this design in emerald, I can expect about 55% brightness, 25% head shadow, and about 25% window. So that's the baseline. Let's see if we can use GCS to improve on this. So again, we go to render, select emerald as the material, and then go to tools and select manual optimizer. The default is the gemstone in the center of this square of gemstones. And what each different gemstone does in this kind of square is it either increases or decreases the angles for the table or the, the crown or the, or the pavilion. And by doing so, it's going to affect the brightness, uh, head shadow, and windowing. Now, if we select uh, the gemstone below our default center stone, this will slightly reduce the angles in the crown of the stone. It won't affect the pavilion. And so let's see how that affects the performance, the brightness and windowing mainly. Uh, we can see from our graph that brightness increases to about 60% and head shadow and window are below 20%. So this is, is an improvement. Uh, you can play around with some of the other options, select some of the other uh, gemstones. But I can tell you, this is about the best I could get. And so this is the design that I'm going to cut. So since I'm happy with uh, this design, I want to, to lock it in and uh, save those angles. So you select Apply, and then you save the file. I saved it as Simple Portuguese for Barrel. Uh, now if you go to File and Print, you'll be able to see a PDF version of these instructions. Um, you can either print them or just cut the stone with the um, instructions on the screen. Uh, notice that the angles for the pavilion are unchanged from Jeff's original design, but that because I uh, tweaked it a little bit using the manual optimizer, uh, GCS adjusted the angles on the crown slightly. And this is what gives us our slightly improved brightness for using emerald. In Jeff's original design, you start um, for the crown with an angle of 42 degrees, and in that design, each tier or row is reduced by 4 degrees for, for the angle. So in the new manually optimized design, improved for barrel or emerald, I start with an angle of 39.02 degrees, and each row or tier is cut after that about 4 degrees less. Um, but this slight change in cutting angles uh, is expected, according to GCS, to improve the brightness of the stone somewhat. Okay, I've gone over our emerald with a uh, 600 grit topper, uh, just preforming it. And there's still one inclusion that I have to work out of the stone, otherwise it's internally flawless. It's right there, right there near the surface. and. Uh, but I have lots of room uh, for the crown, the upper half of the stone, so that's very near the surface. So I'll just bring down the pavilion a little bit and work that out, and then the, uh, the stone's going to be internally, internally flawless. So I'll start working on the 12M, which is a 1500 grit uh, lap. I finished going over our emerald with a 3,000 grit diamond on a bat lap and uh, it's ready for polish but I think I'm going to go over it one more time with 13,000 grit diamond on a bat lap and just uh, just make those uh, meat points even a little tighter. I think they're all there but I'm going to go over it one more time. Okay I just finished going over this uh, lab emerald with uh, 13,000 grit diamond on a bat lap. There wasn't uh, it wasn't really necessary to do this extra pre-polish, but uh, it's such a beautiful stone. It's, it's already, in, it's about right at 12 millimeters. Then I went ahead and did a, a extra pre-polish. So now I'll polish the uh, pavilion and then we'll transfer the stone. I finished polishing the pavilion of our emerald with uh, Creamway Lap from Gearloose with, uh, I supercharged it with some cerium oxide uh, and water in a spray bottle. And uh, stone's coming together nicely. 
Okay, I used uh, cerium oxide in my uh, creamway lap to polish the upper half or the crown of this uh, emerald. Now I'll just need to uh, set it up to cut the table and then we'll be finished with this stone. Okay, I finished polishing the table of our emerald with uh, the gear loose uh, creamway lap and cerium oxide. So now I'll soak this stone in the dop in uh, acetone to remove the two-part epoxy. Then I'll weigh it, measure it, and uh, send it off to Bulpy. She's got a design she's working on to put this in. So Bulpy had a client who was looking for a large lab-created emerald in, in a Portuguese design. They were talking about 11 millimeters, and it's difficult to find lab-created emerald rough that is deep enough or thick enough to cut larger stones. Fortunately, when I had the chance a few years ago, I purchased a large block of the thickest piece of clean emerald rough that Chatham had available. And because I had a very large piece of uh, Chatham emerald, I was able to not only cut an 11 millimeter uh, Portuguese stone, but actually just shy of a 12 millimeter stone. And it's always good uh, when you can have a bigger stone than expected. And since I've been learning about Gem Cut Studio or GCS, I used what I've learned uh, to take Jeff's simple Portuguese design and tweak it just a little bit to optimize the brightness of the finished stone. Although the design by Jeff Graham would have worked fine without any changes and you can simply use that design uh, no problem at all. I feel that GCS did allow me to modify the crown angle slightly and to get about a 5% increase in brightness. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, happy faceting everyone.